Let's talk about the first approach for solving the problem of interactive system. Assuming that you only have an assembly programming language at hand. Uh, for example, what you learned uh, in ECS uh, 2021, uh, the computer architecture course, you learned about the MISP uh, assembly language. Let's say that's the only language you have available. Let's say we're going to create uh, different labels. Each label simply corresponds to each state in your state transition diagram. Let's uh, just take. Uh, let's just recall the information that we mentioned in the previous uh, uh, lecture part. So over here we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six different states, meaning that we're going to get six different labels uh, in the slides. And then let's say specifically we want to take a look at uh, this state to see how we can define the. Uh, corresponding uh, definition. Let's say we want to focus on, just for example, this particular state, state number three, which is about state inquiry, which is something you will see correspondingly in the uh, definition on the slides. And then we know that from the state inquiry states, you can either go to state number two by taking the transition label two, or you can actually go to state number four by taking the state transition three. Okay, just something you want to keep in mind, and then you will see the correspondence in the slides. Okay, let's go back to uh, the slides for the definition. So as I said before, since we got six different states, we're going to have six different labels. So label number one is simply the initial label corresponding to the, the initial states. And also we got a flight inquiry uh, panel, which is uh, actually the label for state number two flight inquiry. And also we got state number three, which is the one we want to focus on just as, a, uh, as an example. And also state number four, state number five, state number six, and etc. So think about your whole system is simply defined in a single place, okay? Just a single, very giant single module. So there, there is no modularity over here. There's only a simple, uh, a single Superman module over here. And then for you can think about the system uh, module is simply divided into different parts. Each part is uh, like a label action over here. So under each label correspond to, uh, corresponding to each state, you're simply just going to define actions. So now the only example we will give is for state number three, which is the one I just highlighted over here. Okay, it's just state number three, the pink one. And then we want to see exactly what's going to happen if we are under this particular section for state number three. Let's see exactly how it's going to go. Okay, let's say for state number three, okay, you can think about this part over here is going to be zoomed in in this uh, part over here, but they belong to the same module. So the way we're going to do it is, let me show you the front until loop, and also I will show you the corresponding while loop, depending on which flavor of the loop you're doing. But logically, they are really equivalents. Let's say initially for every state, we're going to display some state specific information. So we might display some state inquiry panel just to say now you're reaching the state inquiry uh, stage. And then maybe they even show you some promotion details or show you some other uh, state inquiry related information, whatever, right? Okay, so until, remember for the until condition over here, so this means the exit condition, which means when this particular condition is actually true, so that means we're gonna exit from the loop. Otherwise, we're going to keep interacting with the user until they actually got uh, the exit condition true. So now think about the uh, condition over here, and then we'll try to give you the logical negation in order to write the while loop. So we are saying that uh, as soon as it is not the case that we either got a wrong answer or we got a wrong choice. If you use De Morgan, so that simply means we're saying that if you say not wrong answer, which means correct answer, and this will be flipped to from uh, disjunction to conjunction. And also not wrong choice will become uh, correct choice. So that means you can think about this predicate over here simply is equivalent to when we get both correct answer and also we get a uh, correct choice. In that case, we're gonna end the current interaction with the user and then and then we'll be ready to transition to another state. Okay. So now uh, for every uh, for every iteration for the interaction, we're gonna do the following. First of all, we're going to read the user's answer for the current panel. So here I'm being a little bit more general over here, depending on which state you are in. For example, if you're in a C inquiry uh, states, so what, what kind of answer would you like from the user? Maybe they want to specify the row and also call a number on the flight. So which seat would they prefer, right, for example? But if you're in the context of a different states, so the answer from the user would be different, right, depending on the states. 
And also, your reader uses choice C for the next step. Well, according to our state transition diagram, what are the uh, possible choices for the user? Well, it can either be choice number two or it can be choice number three, right? Only two. On the other hand, if you are in the initial states, what choices do you have? It can be either choice number one, choice number two, or choice number three. It depends on the states, again, just in general. Okay, let's go back here. And then uh, we'll say if the answer from the user is wrong or the uh, the choice from the user is wrong. For example, let's say if the user, for example, let's say we are currently in this state, but the user simply uh, entered a choice, maybe one. That's not applicable for this particular state. So they'll be considered as a wrong choice. Or, it's, or if they simply say four, which is actually completely invalid. So that will also be considered as a wrong choice. And also, let's say the user, they simply be prompted to enter the row and column number on the flight, but somehow they simply enter maybe a column number that's simply too large or too small. Again, that's a wrong uh, input from the user, right? So there are many possibilities over here. So you can think about this process over here is really doing some validation on the input, okay? And if there's anything that's wrong from the user, you're going to output some error messages, in this case, to the terminal, to the user, to tell them you should really keep trying until you actually enter to the system the correct answer and also the correct choice so that's kind of the uh, the interact uh, the interaction panel uh, interaction pattern that we're defining okay and then so let's say so when you actually so think about this when you can reach this line so that means you already got exited from the loop meaning that we already satisfied this particular exit condition meaning that uh, both the answer and the choice are both valid right remember the De Morgan uh, manipulation that we just talked about. So assuming that uh, both the answer and the choice are actually valid, so now we can process the user's answer. For example, if they enter the uh, correct uh, row and column number on the flight, so now you can go ahead and try to reserve the seat for them. Okay? And then also you can now in, in, uh, inspect about the choice, uh, assuming that they're valid. So in the case of state number three, so either it's two or it's three, right? So now you can say if it is two, so now notice the fundamental part for this particular design. If the choice this, uh, the user actually entered is simply just two. So that means you can think about what we're doing here. Currently, we are executing this particular state. If the user say now, I want to go to state number two, right? So now in that case, I will simply just go to this particular section in the same Superman module. On the other hand, if the user, let's say the current context is over here, if they say, I want to choose uh, action number three, which means I should go to state number four, right? You can look up the transition, right? You can see if I choose action number three, I will go to state number four over here. In that case, I will simply just jump from here to here. So that's the essence for having the go to, uh, go to labels, okay? So that's about the entire definition for this single module. Okay, uh, let me just do a little bit more, more of explanation on this particular uh, exit condition here. I know that usually your fellow students are having some difficulty understanding the logic over here. Let me explain that quickly and then I'll post the question to you. Okay, let me do that quickly. Okay, so now this is basically already the code fragment that we ex uh, explained already. I want to now focus on uh, this particular part, this particular logic, this part here. Okay, so now this uh, until part over here is called the ex exit condition. Exit condition simply means as soon as it's true, you're going to exit from the loop. So this uh, part over here is very important. As soon as it's actually true, as long as it is false, you're going to keep iterating, uh, you're, you're going to keep uh, repeating the iterations, basically, okay? So now, uh, we already talked about this particular logic over here by De Morgan, right? De Morgan, right? That you that you learned from the previous course is simply going to be not the case, wrong answer. And also flip the or into and, and also not the case, uh, wrong choice, wrong choice. So that's also, that's definitely equivalent to, if you say not the case, wrong answer, that means correct answer. Correct answer. And also conjunction, and also correct. You think about this part over here, 
not the case wrong, uh, wrong choice, it will be correct choice. So this is the ultimate uh, exit condition you can think about logically, that's equivalent. So now the question is, how do you uh, turn this into another uh, style of the loop? For example, if you go to a C family uh, language, like a C shop or Java, or maybe even C, how do you write a while loop uh, correspondingly? So in a while loop, this is what you would do. If you say while over here, so whatever you put in over here is so-called the uh, stay condition. Meaning that as long as it's true, okay, you're going to keep iterating. So this is uh, also another, another important point for you to note. As long as it is true, you're going to keep iterating. So now, how can you put a condition there? Well, the easy principle to remember is, is sim well, uh, we're talking about completely two opposite concepts over here. One is about the state condition, the other one is about exit condition. So what about the Boolean condition to put here? We just put exactly logical uh, negation. So now when you say not the case, right? So we'll simply say it is the case. So we can say uh, wrong choice, disjunction or wrong choice. Okay, let me just uh, get rid of this. Wrong uh, answer, uh, actually wrong choice or wrong answer. I just put the uh, order in the opposite, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I want you to think about basically this. You can see wrong choice or wrong answer. You can see this one remain the same. The only thing that's really different is I don't have the not over here. So that's they're completely the negation of each other. Okay, so now I'm saying while the user is giving a wrong answer or they are or they are giving a wrong answer, as long as it's not the case that both of them are actually correct. And then I'm going to repeat uh, whatever uh, body of the iteration for as many times as necessary. So the body of uh, the interaction pattern over here would be the same between the while loop and also the front until loop. It's just that the uh, exit condition over here versus the state condition over here would be different, completely the logical negation of each other. So that's something I would like to emphasize, just to make sure you can program uh, design either way. Okay, so now let me post my question to you over here. Let's go back to this design. Assuming that you have understood uh, the essence for this particular design, we have a single superband module over here, and the size of the module really depends on how, how many states uh, and how complex the transitions uh, are in your state diagram, right? Uh, the number of states will simply uh, correspond to the number of uh, label actions over here in your Superman, Superman module, okay? So now, can you criticize on this particular design? What's the pros and cons? I can tell you that the single biggest advantage is every, uh, every information about your system is in a single Superman module. That's the biggest plus. Okay, it's a single place. However, it doesn't necessarily mean it's satisfying the single choice principle. So that's something I would like to mention to you. Having everything uh, defined in a Superman module without any modularity, single place, doesn't really mean you satisfy the single choice principle, not necessarily. Let me give you one hint to think about. Think about, we already give you the details about this particular label action over here. So now, well, other label actions, for example, one over here, and also state number two over here, and also state number four, five, and six, will they be defined in a very similar manner or it will be completely different, okay? So that's the question for you, okay? And then think about it, pause the video, uh, criticize on this design before I go over the answers with you. All right, so let's now criticize the first design. Let's try to criticize from different pers uh, perspectives. Number one, let's talk about runtime execution. If I switch back to our definition over here, so the very characteristic property of this particular first design is we have a single Superman module over here. You can see this is the single Superman module that we have. This is the basically the entire system. So let me emphasize again. So this is a Superman module. And whenever you have a Superman module, that means uh, your design is not modular, not. 
you can already see you can already see this design is not good because modularity is really a, a good property for your design to have but apparently uh, what we're doing here for the first design is exactly the opposite everything is in a single place at the superman module so now what's going to happen at the runtime just to say in general we don't necessarily have to uh, uh talk about this particular uh, disadvantage just corresponding to this uh transition over here let's just talk about in general what's going to happen is you start with your initial stage uh initial states you might simply jump to the next states and for the next day you might jump to over here and they might jump back to another states jump back to another states and we come back over here and then you might go to state number two and then you might just go to three and then come back to one and etc so now you can see there's only a single module over here for us to really uh uh to really uh navigate uh the runtime execution for the execution point or the the program counter it's only a single module over here when you try to trace or debug your program you will see you will simply jump back and forth between different parts of your system over here so it becomes very difficult to do uh people actually call this uh the following it they call it a spaghetti code is simply like a bowl of spaghetti. You can see the shape over here for the runtime execution is simply like a spaghetti uh, that you typically have used for your supper. So now, so this is definitely not good because make it very hard to predict, trace, and debug your code, right? I don't need, uh, need to explain any further, but you, you can definitely try to really program this in your assembly code if you wish, and then try to trace the code. At the runtime, it's much more difficult than the other two designs that we're going to talk about later. Okay, so that's the first design aspects that we I would like to talk about about runtime uh, feasibility of tracing the box if there's any. Number two is about the transitions. Let's see what the point is. So the transitions are simply hardwired as the system central uh, control structure over here. You can see, you can see everything that we uh, everything about this particular diagram over here is completely hardwired into all the label actions over here is completely hardwired meaning that every time if i want to modify for example as i said before if you actually want to maybe add a new state over here or if you want to collapse uh, these two states over here as we talked about previously in that case always you have to touch the same module over here so that means your your system well basically in this case your system is the same module so that means every time you want to make even a tiny change you have to change the entire system because it's the entire system is the same module so that means that's also not good so we say that your system is very fragile to any uh changes doesn't matter if there's tiny or major changes you always have to touch the entire system so that's the second uh disadvantage for your design Okay, so it's very vulnerable. Your system is very vulnerable, vulnerable to the changes or addition of states and transitions. It's because you have a Superman module, a single Superman module for your design. Okay, point number three. So we talk about all the label blocks over here. So now, are they? Well, there's a question I posed to you before you pause the video. Are they largely similar or are they largely different? Well, it should be that they are largely similar. So you can think about the pattern over here I talk about, right? It basically to say until the user does not uh, give you any invalid input, uh, it does not give you any invalid input answer or input choice. In that case, you're otherwise you're going to keep interacting with the user. The pattern really stay the same for every single state, meaning that when you define this particular state, for example, you're going to largely copy and paste this fragment of code, except that maybe you have to change whatever you want, you want to go to over here and whatever you want to go to over here. And also, maybe the state information you have to display will be a little bit different. And also here, maybe to really validate uh, the user's answer over here, uh, hope, to, to really uh, process the user's answer choice or to process their uh, answer uh from maybe credit card information or whatever in that case it would be also a little bit different between from state to state but the structure over here we're just repeating over and over again imagine that if you have a large number of states in your system let's say you got a, a thousand states you're going to repeat this very similar pattern for a thousand times meaning that well you got lots of repetition and whenever you got lots of repetition that means you're violating the single choice principle Okay, let me just give you one example over here. So let's say this, if we decide to say, whenever we are doing our validation here, 
uh, let me use a different color to show you. So let's say for this part over here, if we decide not only that we're going to, well, when we print the error message to the user, not only that we, should we do it when this wrong answer or wrong choice, let's say we want to have another condition, let's say or maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe wrong. Uh, let's say the, you, you, you need to answer the choice, you need to answer some answer, uh, or maybe uh, let's say timeout, let's say wrong timing. Let's say the user will simply be uh, output an error if they actually uh, leave uh, leave this computer or the system idle for too long. I'll just say wrong timing over here. Okay. Let's say we want to make this change to the logic for the pattern over here. So we are basically making a change over here, this spot over here. So now, is that the only place we have to make changes? Well, not necessarily. We have to repeat. Uh, we have to make the same change for every repetition. So that means we gotta make the change over here, over here, over here, over here, and over here. So we're gonna make multiple places of changes. So that apparently mod uh, violates single choice principle. So let me emphasize again. Intuitively, you might be thinking to yourself, even though we're having a super Superman module, so that would mean we're putting everything into a single place. So I should be able to satisfy single choice principle. No, it's not the case. Even though you're putting every label actions uh, label action into a single Superman module, but the fact that you're repeating every one of them by a very similar structure. So that means that if there's anything that's to be changed on the structure, you have to make multiple changes on uh, the same Superman module. So that's why you're violating single choice principle rather than satisfying it. So that's something I'll let like to clarify uh, for you. Okay, so that's about the third design point I would like to criticize. And we say that you design smells because you got lots of duplicates and repetitions. So this also violates the single choice principle. Okay. Okay. So finally, so we talk about reusability of your system. It's at uh, this point is easy to illustrate. You can think about since we try to hardwire this particular simplified uh, flight control uh, flight reservation system, hardwire that into this uh, Superman module. So that means this module here is very, very specific to this particular system over here. So, th so that means you cannot easily reuse this particular module for maybe another, maybe uh, maybe shopping system or maybe uh, maybe train reservation system. As long as you modify, uh, if you change from one system to another, everything we define over here, for example, about state transitions and also about how to display information here, suddenly becomes obsolete. Okay, so that's why having this particular Superman module, which ha which hardwires exactly the particular transition system you're talking about, is uh, is not the way to go. It's simply not reusable. You just cannot reuse this for any other application. So that's the main point. Okay, so the last point, uh, as I just explained, you should not really try to uh, tight uh, your system into a single Superman module that simply hardwires the uh, uh, underlying uh, state transition diagram. That's actually poor design indication. Okay, uh, so that's about the criticism for the first one. Well, the first design, I would say you only go for the first design, even though you got so many uh, disadvantages and so many poor signs for the design. You only go for the first design when you only got a an assembly language like a MISP at HAMS available to you. If you got any other programming language, either C, a procedural language, or any other OOP, in that case, you shouldn't choose design number one. But we, we still present it just to let you know, uh, depending on what's the available language to you. If only assembly is available, in that case, maybe you have to choose design number one. But you have to be aware of all the criticism that we talk about right now. It's actually quite important for you to understand why they are there.